We've actually had a, a very good uh, interaction and found you a, a lovely spot here in Fulton Market and wanted to kind of go through the process and kind of how you saw things and from a from a buyer's standpoint and how that worked out for you and maybe start off with um, you know kind of what do you think was the, was the most important part in the buyer's process for to you to have a broker like myself interact with you? Sure. Uh, for us, especially looking in the area that we were looking at, I think the biggest thing that we needed because of kind of the low volume in the market or low quality of uh, volume was getting access to pre-market deals. Um, it seems like every place that we were going to, they had six offers, three were in cash, you know, three were ready to finance and we were coming in, you know, first person in the open house and we we're already behind the ball. So I think, you know, working with you, what was a great thing was saying, hey, look, you know, we have access to a couple of these things that are coming to the market soon or maybe coming to the market soon, why don't we go take a look? And we were able to go over and take a look at a place and we were able to work out a deal with the seller. You know, the important part is obviously having access to that off-market opportunity is, is critically, important, critically important in a market like this. Those open houses are, you know, full of 20 people, you're competing over price, you know, over list price, and it's just, it just becomes more work than fun. And I think that was a really good experience. What are your, you know, expectations going in from a, from a broker standpoint? You know, obviously you've done this in a, in a couple of different states now. Um, there's an importance level you, you, you do see in a, having a broker uh, help represent you in a purchase. What are some of those attributes you look for when you do select a broker? Yeah, I think first uh, and most importantly is just a good communicator. Uh, somebody, and also kind of part and parcel, a good listener. You want somebody who both kind of knows what you're looking for and is listening to you as your kind of expectations or wants evolve during the process. So in our case, like I know we had started at you know a certain price point and looking for certain things, and that evolved a little bit over time. And you know with each step of the you know quote unquote evolution, you know we were able to kind of look at things that were on point, kind of in our wheelhouse and what we were looking for, as opposed to. Uh, you know, going out and just seeing places. That, hey, look! You know, I'm looking for a three bed, you know, three bath. Just looking at places that had three bedrooms and three baths in the description. It's like you want someone who's going to be, hey, I I want these types of finishes. I'm looking for, you know, a garage space or you know, parking space or or what have you. Which you know, you did well, and I thought that that was yeah. that was very smooth and like worked well for the process. Yeah, it's 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 so overlooked. I mean, I, I feel like it just taking the, the the right notes and understanding what the, what the client's looking for and, and, and teeing that up and obviously being transparent to options that may may be a little outside of what you're looking for and then you know obviously making sure that you're aware of that prior to and if you're okay with seeing it, we don't have to see it. But you know, going outside the box, thinking outside the box. You know, we looked at a couple other things that were creative spaces that we could maybe make work, and it, it didn't work out that way, but I was going to say, so what, one of the things, obviously, we were introduced, and you already had a broker in place prior to meeting me. You fired that broker, um, and we engaged and had a conversation and decided to take the next steps. I want to talk a little bit about that process and how that all kind of unfolded and we came together. Yeah, and, th and that just goes hand in hand with the good listener point. You know, My wife and I had been looking for a place for an extended period of time, and we just weren't seeing what we wanted and you know felt like the communication wasn't uh, as good as it could have been between us and our you know in our first interaction with our first broker and so you know we, we ended up looking at places that either we didn't want to see didn't have the finishes we wanted didn't have all of the criteria that we were looking for in place um, so ultimately that didn't work out and that was fine it was a good experience we learned a lot um, yeah and then we you know we decided to take a pause on the process um, I think we took a month or two off and then we came back and we we're like, okay, let's move forward with this again. And that's when we met and uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that you and I had chatted for, we had a, a couple meetings before we actually went out and looked at anything. And then I think we, you and I looked for about a month, month and a half and then we found something and everything seemed to work out. So. Yeah, I did go through real quick. That was, <clears throat> it seemed like, uh, I don't know if the, maybe the broker took care of the, the heavy lifting on the front end of the other broker, but like, it seemed like there was a, it was a typical transaction. We walked down <laughs> the aisle for four to six weeks and uh, it, it all worked out and you guys got a great place there in Fulton so that's awesome. Yeah and, and the first interaction was helpful in that it kind of narrowed our scope. Yeah. You know, when we first started in all fairness we were kind of all over the map. We weren't sure like where we were going to be as first-time homeowners. And looking for us was was interesting because we were fairly new to Chicago. We'd only been here that time for two years or so and we were renting downtown very close to our offices. Uh, something that's always been important to me and my wife is like hey let's minimize commute as long as possible. Um, just makes life a lot easier and don't want to waste time on sitting on a train and things like that. 
So knowing that, we started looking at different neighborhoods. We didn't really know where we wanted to be. We had an idea of a couple different pockets. Um, you know, some of them were a little bit further out from city center or the loop. Some of them were a little bit closer. And it was interesting because every, you know, each different neighborhood we went to has a different style of housing. So initially, you know, I think my wife and I were really looking for single family, you know, detached kind of standalone home. Um, obviously tough to find in the city. Sure. Got to push out a little bit further, uh, which made our commute a little further away. And I think we saw that we were kind of unwilling uh, to sacrifice kind of, you know, time together, doing these together and, and just kind of spending time on the commute. So we started pulling in closer and closer, you know, back to city center in the loop. Um, and, you know, we had gone through and looked at many open houses and just kind of the floor plans weren't working. Some of the older style floor plans that you'll see here and some of the more traditional housing. Uh, you know, then we started looking at other things like condos and for us, it, it just wasn't a, it, it wasn't what we wanted starting a new family and didn't want to walk up. So looking at, you know, different types of condo setups, you know, we weren't, and, and I've, I've known others that have had bad experiences with, you know, the one flat down or, or being at the top, you know, either they don't want to walk up or they have water issues at the bottom. Right. You know, the middle level can be noisy. You know, again, these are all generalities, but, you know, we went to a couple different places and didn't see any of those like issues kind of right away, but it was always in the back of our mind. So ultimately it was just not something that we were all that interested in. Um, you know, I was also kind of set on, hey, you know, I'm older now, I want my own place. Um, and then my wife floated the idea of, hey, look, hey, we're, you know, we're always in the West Loop, we're always in full market. Why don't we look down there? Yep. And, you know, my immediate response was, well, I don't want to live in another apartment. I don't want to be in another high rise. And she was like, hey, let's just take a look around. So, uh, you know, we did look around and we, we actually found out that there's a bunch of townhomes, uh, townhomes down there, which I thought was a good fit because... Yeah, you have neighbors, but you know you're super close to downtown. You're in the middle of everything that's going on. Uh, you know we love going out to dinner, so we're right in the middle of the restaurant scene and kind of everything that's going on. Plus, it was very interesting to be in, in a, an area like Fulton Market that was going through the development it was going through at the time. Yeah. So it re kind of reminded me of when I was a kid and looking at like the meatpacking district in New York City, like going through its transformation. Uh, when we moved in, there was still like you know meat purveyors and fish markets going on down there. And, you know, in a couple of years, they were all replaced with restaurants, Google went in, uh, you know, McDonald's came to the West Loop, all that kind of stuff. And that's the interesting thing, too. It's like, you know, you start to stereotype, you're like, oh, well, this, this pocket looks like, you know, it's all high rises or this area of the city looks like it's all, you know, single family homes or this and that. You know, you, it's interesting if you look hard enough to see the diversity of like housing types that you can find in those pockets. So, you know, Jason, we'll be talking a lot about, uh, you know, my search, what we were looking for and things like that. But, you know, I'm just kind of curious myself now having gone through the process. Two part question for you. You know, one is what's some of the important information somebody can come to you with to aid their search? And I guess two, which kind of goes with it, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people make? Yeah. First and foremost, uh, we if you're not already connected, being connected to a lender is huge. Obviously, we're going to be shopping for a home, so we need to know what you can spend. Uh, and teeing those numbers up, if it's going to be a condo play, then we need to know where those taxes need to be, where the HOA threshold needs to be, and your price point, and where you feel comfortable being. And then set those search criteria up and layer those over that search criteria. That way, we're looking at things you can actually buy and not shopping for things you can't because it's easy to fall in love with stuff you can't afford and then you're not going to be happy we're looking at stuff like that that doesn't fit the bill. So I think pre-qualification is huge, uh, connecting with the lender uh, and getting that all sorted early in the game is, is the best fit for sure. Um, the biggest mistakes I think is, is for folks who may not know where they want to be, so they select four or five, six neighborhoods, which is just not ideal um, because those six neighborhoods probably have seven places to see. You know, we're talking a lot of a lot of showing. So I think that focusing in on two or three neighborhoods or two, um, ideally one, would be a big a big help. And that goes back to what you were talking about earlier with your commute times, your lifestyles. Where does that balance at, and where do you feel comfortable doing? I think that's really going to help the search as far as from the time frame standpoint. And that, and that that's usually when I see, oh yeah, I want to be in Lincoln Park, Lakeview, Roscoe Village, Bucktown, um, Old Town, and then it's like that's the whole north side like you know that's that can begin to begin a, a little out of whack and i think that needs to get roped in but we, we do that it's it's completely fine 
and I think once once people get out and start seeing stuff, they start to understand the value trends and understanding the price per square foot and what you get for the dollars that they can spend. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 probably the biggest mistake is, is just having a, a really wide radius of search uh, location from a geography standpoint. But once I get ropes, once that gets roped in, it's it's a lot easier to, to navigate and find the right home. Well, the one thing you mentioned I think was an interesting point because I remember it was something that I don't think you know we appreciated in the beginning of our search was making sure you know a whether there is an HOA fee and how much that is and how much that'll factor into budgets and things like that because Absolutely. you know you say hey look. You know, pre-qualified for this, I think this is what I can spend, and then you know you you tend to forget that hey, you may also have this monthly maintenance fee that you have to pay into every month. Yeah. So that's that's definitely a good thing to uh, to keep in, in mind and consider. Yeah, the the HOA, the taxes, and the purchase price are all three numbers. You know, those are those all fly into that monthly note, and they need to you need to have a really clear transparency on what your thresholds are on those price points because. Again, you know, you, you could be looking at new construction, and it could be a hundred and fifty dollar HOA because it's brand new construction, or you could be looking at a, a dated high rise downtown and it's sixteen hundred dollar HOA a month. You know, it's, it's they're all over the board, so it's an important factor to know, and they and they all change. So it's a, it's a good number to know for sure.